the streak now is a 21. Uh, very happy about the fact that I, uh, I beat my last streak uh, of 16. Very happy about that. So now I'm thinking uh, I'm going to start pushing the envelope a little bit with the back off volume. Uh, basically all the way through um, in this streak, I've done very minimal back off work. Uh, very, very minimal. In fact, yesterday, I think it was the first time I did front squats this whole time. Uh, so I've, I've backed away from the front squats, I've backed away from uh, the deadlifts. Uh, all of my resources have gone in to the back squats, the recovery for the back squats, so I can hit the 200 kilos. Uh, but now I feel like, you know, not that I want to end the streak, uh, I definitely don't want to do that, but I do want to start trickling in a little bit more volume. Uh, so today I hit 200 again, and I wanted to hit 140 for a set of 10. Uh, I think, actually I didn't hit a, a 10, I, I did nine purely because I miscounted. Uh, the reason why I'm thinking along these lines is because I, I think I need a little bit more conditioning. When I say conditioning, I don't mean like running endurance races. I mean that I need muscular endurance in order for me to get the third, the fourth, the fifth rep of the 200 kilos. Uh, there's structural fatigue that I, that I feel uh, when I'm doing more reps. So the first rep kind of feels like it's really good when I'm doing 200 kilos. And then the second rep, I feel like I, I, I lose positioning. I feel like I start to you know, uh, sacrifice some position in my, in my spine. Uh, and I think that's because, well, it's obvious. I'm not doing any rep work. And so some of these postural muscles, uh, my core definitely uh, doesn't really experience a lot of time under tension, uh, which is all well and good. Like if you're just interested in doing 200 kilos in the 201, 202, 203, or five, you know, do, doing that kind of linear progression and, and challenge the body in that sense, you can definitely do that. Uh, I think what for me and how I am and how I, you know, look at training and how I want to move I don't particularly like to push weight as you guys have already noticed that um, I don't like the feeling that you know that dooming feeling like oh it's another kilo you know the whole uh, psychological aspect to it uh, what I much much rather is simply adding another rep and so I know I've spoken about, you know, one rep calculators in the past and there's obvious, you know, limitations to these things, especially if you start going away from the singles, doubles and triples, that's when these equations work the best. If you start plugging in a set of 10, instead of 15, it gets kind of a little bit shaky and the transfer, you know, into to reality, you know, you lose it a little bit. Um, but having said all of that, I feel like if I can get 200 for five or 200 for 10, uh, it becomes more and more possible in my mind, at, at least, that 220 for one is possible and 230 and all that sort of stuff. So I feel like that's a nice little progression for me. It's a nice little goal. One of you guys actually said, uh, you know, what happened to 100, uh, 180 for 10? You know, and I thought, my God, I completely eluded me that you can also do other weights other than 200. Um, and then I thought to myself, I think it's a really good idea for me to start trickling some of this 70%, you know, 60%, 80%, that kind of stuff for a bit of a uh, bit of rep work. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing five by five. Uh, like for instance, today, all I'm going to do is what I've done is a set of 10, just a set of 10, 140. And then I'm kind of looking to progress that. I don't know if I'm going to progress it to a set of 15, then a set of 20 or do a set of 10 with 140, then do another set, uh, like, you know, in the coming days or weeks or whatever, do another uh, 10 uh, with 150, then 160 and that kind of stuff, you know, progressing, you know, the weight with a 10 rep kind of parameter. Um, it's just one way to go about it. I know there's, there's many different ways and, you know, a lot of you guys might be thinking, oh, Ivan is accidentally again, again, uh, periodizing, you know, this is, form of periodization except for me I'm not dropping away from the singles I'm actually doing the singles concurrently so it's kind of like doing two qualities at the same time uh, obviously they're going to compete for resources they're going to compete for adaptations or whatever so it's a bit tricky like that but uh, you know this is why I'm kind of thinking you know if I start pushing too heavily and uh, you know allocating too many recovery points for this rep work I might start to feel the 200 slow down the 200 start to kind of feel really, really heavy and, and whatnot. 
uh, in the set of 10 that I did or set of nine that I did 140, I felt the quads, I felt the erectors, you know, I felt my core, I felt the uncomfortableness, you know, of being underweight for a little while. Even though like when you on rack or when I on rack 140, it feels like a feather. This is the thing with the central nervous system. It's like, it feels like a feather, right? You walk it out, you do the first rep, it's like, man, this is a joke. I could probably jump with this. But then the second and third and the fourth and the fifth rep, the body starts to kind of enter a new realm. And that new realm starts to kind of like, you know, the lights start to kind of dim out. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, you know, you're doing the tenth rep, uh, and you're like, well, okay, this is this is different. Like the spark is not there, and you just you feel like you've entered a new energy system. That's kind of how it feels in a way. There's like a transition. Um, so I think I'm gonna start doing that a little bit now. Um, What's happening with the bodyweight squats? Ever since I started doing the tire sleds or the, the, the tire pulls, uh, I hadn't, haven't done any sort of bodyweight squats at all. I found that the, the two things were basically exhausting equally. So I could not do both of them uh, at the same time. And then the last two or three days, it's kind of been rainy. It's kind of been gloomy. Uh, I've had work and whatnot. So I haven't gone out to pull the, the tire in the last three days. Uh, so, you know, we're kind of entering slowly into kind of like a wetter season here in Australia and I'm thinking, okay, so these tire pulls are going to be less and less frequent. That's okay. I can go back to bodyweight squats. Uh, but now I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I start doing these sets of 10 or whatever, how does that fit into this? You see how like you're, you're moving a number of different pieces around the chessboard and trying to make sure how it all kind of uh, falls into place. Uh, so let's see how, how I go with this. Uh, obviously, it's going to be fully auto-regulated, but what I'm thinking about is every day, uh, it's subject to change, obviously. Every day, I'm going to come in and I'm going to try and hit 200, do the 200, and then do either some back-off work with the front squats or the back squats. The front squats are great because it's less weight and also it's more pressure on the structural muscles, uh, namely the upper back, mid-back, and lower back. I definitely feel it. I know it's funny when I say lower back and mid-back in front squat, but definitely for me, it's like, it's, you know, I get domes through the mid-back and upper-back like you wouldn't believe. Like, it seems as though the back squats don't do anything for those muscles. Uh, so that's what I'm, kind of what I'm thinking about doing. So let's see how it pans out. Um, and let's see if I'm going to get back into bodyweight squats sometime soon with all of that being said. Uh, the push-ups have completely fallen off. The elbow is bothering me. Uh, officially bothering me, even when I'm not doing bench pressing, it's bothering me. Even after I do a, a, a squat set i come off and i can't straighten my arm fully uh so as i'm talking to you guys i'm in the midst of doing some bicep curls with the bar so after i finish this up i'm going to go back and do a couple more sets trying to do something with it uh, i have never had this type of issue in the past i've had a bit of achiness here and there but not like this where it's like the pain is preventing me to lock out uh so that is completely halted i think it's been two days three days since i've last done push-ups and i'm thinking about giving that a rest as well uh, so the elbow is bothering me now um, maybe this is a reminder that i completely screwed up the ratios i need a lot more pulling uh, I, I i don't like doing a bicep curls um, i love doing pull-ups but i i Wanted to do lots of push-ups, so I did push-ups, but anyway, so there's lots of things in my mind right now. It looks as though, it looks as though that I'm moving away from the bodyweight stuff, um, but maybe I should go back to them. Never forget the hand that fed you. All of this is because of the bodyweight squats and the push-ups. Um, I'm not going to you know, forget that. So I'll, I'll do some bicep curling for the next week or so, and then hopefully I can get back to push-ups. The band work you know, uh, accommodating the resistance with the bench press, that is gone. Like, I'm not worrying about that at all. That really screwed my freaking elbow up. Anyway, guys, let me get out of here and go to work. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.